Hoćete skazati Hristos voskres? Slava Bogu, Dragana Crkva. Um, thank you to the leaders, to the pastors who have allowed us to be here on this Sunday morning. Um, it is an honor to be here. And I just want to share two quick thoughts on, on the blood of Jesus. And number one is that the blood of Jesus cleanses us. And number two, the blood of Jesus heals us. So I'll jump straight into scripture in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. It says that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So there may be shame, there may be guilt in the things that we have done against God or against man, but his blood, it is more than enough to cleanse our sin and to cleanse our heavy conscience. In the Old Testament, the high priests and the people of God, they would use goats and they would use the blood of lambs to cover their sins temporarily, to cover their guilt temporarily. But how much more does the blood of the crucified and risen Son of God cover our guilt and cover our shame? In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22, it says that let us, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him for our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean and our bodies have been washed with pure water. So again, the guilt that we have been holding, the shame that we have been holding, his blood is enough to give us freedom. His blood is enough to set us free. You know, since the beginning of time, since Adam and Eve sinned, the souls of men have been stained with sin. And we see this very, very clearly in the world today. And this stain has only gotten bigger. This stain has only gotten worse through government, through strange philosophies, through, through science and whatnot. And so we try to, we try to get rid of this, of this sin, this, this stain of sin on our souls on our own, and we only make it worse. There's a story of a, of a young man who, who wore his most favorite shirt to school one day. And during their lunch break, he was eating pilmeni with ketchup. And as he was eating the pilmeni, he was eating them very quickly. And so he, he dropped a little bit on his shirt. And so this, this ugly red stain got onto his shirt. And he became very sad. He ran over to the bathroom. And in the bathroom, he grabbed a rag. And he began to rub this, rub this stain off of his shirt. But the more he rubbed it, the worse it got and the bigger the stain got. And so later that day, he went home with his face disfigured. He was sad and everything. And his father notices this, and he said, son, what is wrong? And he said, my shirt is ruined. My favorite white shirt has been ruined. And the father tells his son, son, I will clean this for you. I will wash it for you. I will bring it back good as new. And the son was still sad. He couldn't really believe that the, that the dad can do that for him. But the very next day, the son, he goes into his room, and there the shirt is clean, completely, wa completely washed, uh, washed the stain away, and it is nice and folded on his bed. And in the same exact way, Again, we try to get rid of this stain of sin on our own, with our own human wisdom. But I believe the Lord is telling us today, he's telling you today to give him your heart and he will wash you in his blood and he will take the sin out of your life. Um, so again, the blood of Jesus cleanses us and now the blood of Jesus, it heals us. In Isaiah chapter 53, while Jesus was dying on the cross to save you from your sin, he was also dying to heal you of your sickness, to heal you of your disease. In verse 5 of Isaiah 53, it says that by his wounds you are healed. It doesn't even say you will be healed. It says you are healed. So I believe if we take it by faith, there is a power that comes upon us. Um, and many wonder today whether it is God's will to heal them. And many, many people, I believe, sometimes get a bit confused with theology, but Colossians 1.15 says that Jesus, he is the perfect image of of the invisible God. So I believe that if we look at the life of Jesus, we will know what the will of God is. If we look at the life of Jesus, we will have perfect theology because again, he is the perfect image of the invisible God. Throughout all the scripture, we see that wherever Jesus stretched his hand, there was healing, there was deliverance, and there was salvation. Wherever his feet took him, there was healing, deliverance, and salvation. In Luke chapter five, we see the, the leper, he comes up to Jesus and he says, Jesus, are you willing to heal me? And he says, I am willing, be healed. And at that instant, the man was healed of leprosy in Jesus' name. So again, Jesus' life, everywhere he went, there was healing, there was salvation, and there was deliverance. So in this, we can know what the will of God is. And I believe that the devil did not like the fact that wherever Jesus went, there was miracles. So 
Through evil men, he decided to nail Jesus' hands onto the cross. And through evil men, he decided to nail Jesus' feet to the cross so that no longer could he stretch out his hand to heal the sick, so that no longer could he walk through the streets of Jerusalem and proclaim the kingdom of God. And so the devil decided to crucify Jesus onto the cross through evil men. But little did he know that he was making one of the biggest mistakes in history. He was crucifying God himself to the tree. Little did he know that for the first time in history, God himself began to bleed on the cross. The most powerful substance in the universe began to flow through Jesus. And I believe that his blood has been flowing for the past 2,000 years. And even in this church today, even at this 10 a.m. service, I believe that his blood is flowing in the church. And I believe that if we were to receive just one drop, just one touch from his blood, we will be healed of our, of our sicknesses. We will be cleansed of all of our sin. You know, the woman who had the issue with bleeding, she touched just the hem of his garments, but we are under the blood covenant. Jesus has shed his blood for you and I. Jesus has been crucified. Jesus is risen. We are under his blood covenant. So I believe that if we receive just one drop of his blood by faith, the sin will be taken out of your life and you will receive healing in your physical body. So I just like to lead us into a prayer. And in this prayer, if you have been struggling with sin, if you have been dealing with, with the guilt and the shame that comes with sin, I would like for you to call upon the name of Jesus in this prayer because he is worthy and he is faithful to deliver. He is faithful to, to take, you out, take you out of your sin, to take you out of bondage. And then again, if in this prayer, if you are dealing with sickness, if you are dealing with disease, by faith, receive just one drop of this blood. By faith, call upon his name, and I believe you will even receive healing because his blood was enough. His blood is still flowing, and, his, and he is alive today. And also in this prayer, if you haven't completely given your life over to Jesus, I, I want to encourage you to do so. He is coming soon. We can see it very clearly that we are living in the end times. He is coming soon. We don't know if we have tomorrow, and I believe that Jesus, he wants all of us. He doesn't want just 50% of our lives. He doesn't just want our Sunday mornings or, our, or our, our Thursday night youth service. He wants our whole entire lives. Jesus has bought us with a high price. He didn't buy us with silver or gold, as it says in 1 Peter, but he has bought us with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So he wants all of your life. He wants 100% of you. He wants you to lay your life down and live for him. The word of God says that he died not only so that you could have eternal life, but that so you could live a life for him and for his glory. So with that, I would like to lead us into this prayer. Again, if you are, if you are in need of healing, if you are in need of salvation, if you are in need of a cleansing of your conscience and sin, his blood is enough. Call upon his name. So let's rise for prayer. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you glory. We worship.